If you scan the federal capital territory environs, you might happen upon several abandoned projects, incomplete highways, byways, ramps, and pedestrian bridges. Then there are the infrastructure constantly vandalized, traffic light fixtures, manholes, rail tracks. There is nothing people won't steal in the name of hunger in the land. There is also a rise in petty crime thanks to population explosion. Though the rampancy of uncompleted projects has vastly reduced in the past few years, there's still room for much improvement, especially in some districts that have virtually no infrastructure. The increased banditry in some states surrounding the capital city have left residents in fear for their safety. The minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Mala Mohamed Bello, addressed these issues in a ministerial briefing at the State House in Abuja, and this briefing forms the interview segment on the show today. Also on the program, our focus on the nation's capital and a rundown of the major issues from Nigeria's seat of power. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dateline Abuja. Hello and welcome to Dateline Abuja. I am Kayla Magwa. We begin with a rundown of major issues from Nigeria's presidency. The National Security Council has announced that the Islamic State of West Africa province, Iswap, is responsible for the attack on St. Francis Catholic Church, or War on Do State, that led to the death of about 38 persons on the 5th of June. Brief and State House correspondent after the council meeting presided over by President Muhammad Buhari, the Minister of Interior, Ogbeni Raouf Aregbeshola, disclosed that the police have been directed to apprehend the perpetrators and bring them to justice. Let us debunk the Arunos believe that the attack in a war is not an organization of Nigeria, is an organization of Nigeria, is an organization of Nigeria. No. Criminals, international criminals, savages who have no religion, who, are, who, do, who, who, who cannot even be said to belong to any particular ethnic nationality, are at pitching us against one another. That is what ISWAP represents. That is what, and we say, I said, we have seen their imprint in that attack, and we're after them. If, if I know where they are, I would not say it openly here. Because we are not yet there. Until, until we apprehend them or neutralize them, it will be totally irresponsible to not be telling you where they are openly here. And I, even if I say so, I don't have to report it. It won't help the cause of apprehending them. And, 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 and I want you to understand the context where I'm, I, I'm, I'm saying this. If you are genuine about our interest for our nation as patriots, there are information that you must even keep. Should I even carelessly drop the int? And I will not be too careless to drop the int. Our, our security agencies and forces are on their trail. We have indication of who they are. And we are going to get them to, to bring them to justice. That is the essence of my co communication in that regard. Also this week, President Buhari inaugurated the Presidential Council on Digital Economy and E-Government, promising that his administration will continue to take advantage of digital technologies to transform every sector of the economy. The president also directed the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Dr. Isa Pantami, to chair the council on his behalf and give regular updates. President Muhammad Buhari has lauded the cordial relations between Nigeria and South Sudan, saying it will continue to improve. He made the commendation in Abuja when he hosted the outgoing ambassador of South Sudan, Mr. Paul Molong, who paid him a farewell visit. The president has handed the flag of the All Progressives Congress to the presidential flag bearer, Ashuaju Bola Tinubu, after securing the highest number of votes during the special national convention of the party. Meanwhile, Mr. Tinubu paid a courtesy visit to the president in the state house. He also paid a surprise visit to the vice president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo. During the meeting with the president, the former Lagos state governor, who was accompanied by Governor Babajide Sonwonlu of Lagos State, says he was at the villa on a thank you visit. All APC family members should celebrate in a limited manner. We just begin a hard work. The work ahead. To win the victory for our party is a hard one, and we will win. 
The chairman of Nigeria's main opposition, the People's Democratic Party, Senator Iyocha Ayu, is asking all its governorship candidates in the forthcoming general elections to ensure that the party controls 25 states out of the 36 states of the federation in 2023. He gave the charge at the presentation of the certificate of return to the party's governorship candidates. We believe that the PDP will go back to its winning ways. When we started in 1999, we were able to produce 21 governors. We grew that number in 2003 to 28 and sustained it at 28 up to 2007. Unfortunately, we came through hard times and the number declined. Today, we have only 13 governors. And for a political party of this nature, that is not good enough. All of you must therefore work very hard. Reconcile with whoever opposed you. Work with everybody, carry everybody along. So that at the end of the day, by next year, we should be able to come back to at least 25 governors. Three years after unveiling the name and logo of the new national carrier, Nigeria Air, the Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority has issued an air transport license to the interim management. Speaking at a ceremony in Abuja, the Director General of the agency, Mr. Nuhu Musa, explains that this will be followed by the issuance of the air operator certificates, which will enable the airline to commence operations. It's a step. Uh, one of the certificates uh, required towards uh, scheduled passenger operations and is a big step forward in the uh, processing of the air operator certificate AOC, which is uh, presently uh, ongoing. Uh, it's very important for us to have strong airlines in Nigeria in view of the single African air transport market and the African continental free trade area, which can make significant contribution to the growth of the Nigerian economy. We have one of the largest markets, if not the largest market in Africa, and we stand to gain the most from this uh, AU uh, Agenda 2063 uh, programs. So welcome on board. We hope, hopefully you guys will start flying soon. And uh, like other operators in Nigeria, we hope you actively participate in single African air transport market for the benefit of the national economic growth and uh, a greater contribution of, uh, from the aviation industry to the gross domestic national product. The more we, we contribute, the more industry contributes, the more we, we become influential uh, in the scheme of things in economic, national economic planning and otherwise in the nation. The federal government has inaugurated an interministerial committee on local vaccines production, targeting COVID-19, Lassa fever and other killer diseases that are peculiar to Africa. Minister of Health Dr. Sagi Haniri presided over the inauguration ceremony. If any other disease appears, like COVID-19, any other pathogen appears, what do we do? Are we going to start all over again? So we decided that we put everybody together to start addressing those things that bother us, particularly in Africa, like Lassa fever, for example. And that is why this committee, this technical working group is set up. Welcome back. Our focus this week is the problem of insecurity and the infrastructure issues in the nation's capital. I don't know about you, but as a resident in Abuja, every time I hear of a kidnapping or a bandit attack in Abuja or its environs, it gives me great worry. This is Nigeria's seat of power. It should be the most secure part of the country. In fairness, a lot is being done to tackle this problem, as you will see in our story. We also look at poor infrastructure, whether unprovided or vandalized, in various parts of Abuja. Please watch this. This is part of efforts by the Federal Capital Territory Authority to ensure compliance to the Abuja Master Plan. This is part of efforts by the Federal Capital Territory Authority to ensure compliance to the Abuja Master Plan. Station. Yeah. 
Shops and illegal markets along the road were removed by a team led by the FCT Ministerial Task Force on City Sanitation. The exercise has taken place on the directive of the FCT Minister and illegal structures within and outside the city centres are not spared. For instance, over 300 structures were demolished in Lugbe, which is along the airport road. Another area affected is Wuse Zone 4, which is popular for the presence of Bureau de Change operators. The task force team specifically cleared shanties constructed primarily of roofing sheets, sacks and wood located within a reserved green area within the zone where BDC operators and small dealers were spotted conducting their businesses in crowded areas. Also, two mosques were demolished within the green vegetation as well as an unlawful cluster of furniture-making factories. Vehicles were hauled from the location, which is apparently densely packed with unauthorized constructions, as the task force explains that the area has become a criminal hideout. A month ago, actually came here and saw wide-scale contraventions at the heart of the city, overlooking Sheraton uh, uh, Hotel, as well as some other uh, very strategic area, even close to Tudumwada Secondary School here, where people who deal in uh, currencies operate here. We saw batchers in the valley, which we have removed. We saw illegal attachments. You can see all of them here. This is a federal government house that was sold to somebody. He converted it to a commercial issue, which is an offense. We are not addressing that one for today. The person added attachment to all parts of the, of the house, which are all very troublesome and worrisome, uh, disturbing contravention here. So we saw, we saw so much, so much bleeding points in the city, and the FCT minister insisted that we must clear all. He even insisted that the Bureau of Change Operators who are operating on the roadside should not be. These are all their shops. Look at all their massive shops they have all around here. So they shouldn't be on the road. They should go back to their shops and deal. And we cannot allow, while we are removing street traders, street hawkers, allow those who deal on currency to remain on the road. So the minister has given directive to the AAPB team and other teams to actually pin down and ensure that. This. So today we came out in operation to clear those persons who are actually roadside traders, those who have bachelors, shanties, those who have uh, furniture market under the Wooster Zone 4 bridge, uh, multiple. One thing that is so key today is that we discover a stolen manhole, stolen manhole cover, and uh, I think the APB team will hand it over to the AB facility management department of the FCT. The offices they are owned by the bureau, the change operator. But unfortunately, some of them have uh, resolved to be trading outside, which is illegal. So we are appealing to them to please go back to their offices and continue their lawful businesses. Anybody caught outside operating will be arrested and be prosecuted. The mobile courts are already on standby, waiting for people who are indulged in kind of these activities to be arrested and brought before it. Responding on behalf of the operators, the secretary of the Elders Forum of the BDC operators, Mr. Yahaya Kida, describes the exercise as a welcome development, explaining that it will help sanitize the area. He wants the exercise to be continuous. On 15 of September, the Honorable Minister, under the chairmanship of the Commissioner of Police, Director of Security, Director of Environmental, invites us and informs us that they are going to take up a cleaning exercise in Zone 4. We cooperated, we informed all our members. Today here they are, and we are welcoming them, and we are warning the touts, the drug peddlers, whoever that attempted to deal with them, we are going to deal with them ruthlessly. We are not going to tolerate them. We are going to cooperate with the government so that they will clean Zone 4, because we are tired of these drug peddlers. Also affected is the illegal market at Yakasua 6th Avenue in Guarimpa. The task force explains that the area is harboring criminals who they alleged attacked the team during the demolition exercise. Today at, we are at uh, Lungu uh, village within uh, Guarimpa and the team came under severe attack by so people that call themselves uh, vigilantes. You're seeing all the law enforcement uh, officers from the government trying to carry out a cleanup. If you can see, you can see a dang gun that was recovered today. Three of, we had four of them that came that to attack the team, but three ran away and were able to apprehend one. We have three suspects presently that have been handed over to the Galadimawa Police uh, Division. The, the law will take its course. Further investigation will be carried out and the law will take its course. And that is why we always discourage people from allowing slums and shanties to fester within planned environments. 
an unplanned environment. And that is why the team has been going out around the city, you know, in recent time to clear all these criminal uh, these chances that harbor criminal elements. This week, we'll be listening to the Federal Capital Territory Minister, Malam Mohamed Bello, as he addresses these issues before State House correspondents during the weekly ministerial briefings. I asked him questions about infrastructure deficits in districts like Durumi and Mabushi, demolitions in and around the city centre, fears residents have expressed on the insecurity in the nation's capital, and the very many projects still underway just a year to the end of his tenure. Please watch this. I will just briefly explain to you what the Federal Capital Territory Administration has been doing over the last few years as part of a very key part of the government of President Muhammadu Buhari. Uh, as you know, since the advent of President Muhammad Buhari during his first tenure and now in his sec second tenure, the government had emphasized on infrastructure. And that has been reflected in a lot of infrastructural works across the nation. In the FCT, even before it became a policy that the target would be to develop infrastructure, from the very beginning, my team and I when I was appointed in November of 2015, looked at the Federal Capital Territory and appraised the level of works that we inherited. And we realized that if we did not focus on completing the projects we found on ground, then within a few years, Abuja would become unlivable. And that is the crux of what had always guided me and my team. Work on infrastructure, complete the ongoing projects, and then looking at the demographic trends and the trajectory that we all envisaged the city was going to be, that is the federal capital city, and by extension the territory, we decided to embark on some additional new critical projects. These developments were done in a modular manner as the city was growing and as the territory was growing. And that's why when we came in, we realized that there were three major arterial roads coming into the city of Abuja that were in various stages of construction. And these were what is popularly known as the Airport Expressway, called Umar Era Dua Expressway, what is popular known as the access into the city through the Kefi Nyanya axis, and then the third one is access into the city through the Zuba, Suleja, Kubua axis. All these roads were under construction when I was appointed in 2015. If you take the Airport Expressway, for instance, for you to enter the city of Abuja, you had to meander through a lot of side streets because simply the bridges were not completed and they were not connected. So, and if you look at the other aspect from the Kefi access, also the same thing, and Dito, the Kubwa Expressway. I'm sure you remember uh, there was a very important bridge over the railway network that was not completed. So basically, this is what we did. We aimed at this. And then subsequently, of course, we looked at the arterial node road networks within the city. And now you will notice now also that we are now connecting districts of the city. This is Galadimawa Expressway. On the right-hand side in the foreground over there is the National Stadium facilities. On the left-hand side, as you proceed, is the Gaines Village. As you can see, the side, uh, the side roads have already been completed. This is the major bridge at this uh, area, one roundabout. No, not, uh, it's, yeah, it's the major roundabout. This road is the one that is going to link Goodluck, Ebele, Jonathan, right through to Galadimawa. The bridge has been done. As you can see, uh, a lot of work has been done. This is the road 
project that I think we should be able to deliver, God willing, by 29th May 2023. We have to own the city. We have to be patriotic. We have to appreciate what we have. Because if you don't appreciate what you have, you will never protect what you have. So these are some of the things. And in addition to that, uh, we have a couple of developments we are doing. This is the, the city is planned in such a way that you have a series of ring roads. The first ring road called Ring Road 1 is Namdi Azukwe, which starts from the Katampe Hills and terminates at the Villa uh, up or roundabout. And then the next one is Ring Road 2. That's the one that starts from uh, going to Kapitampe district proper, and you pass through uh, um, Jahi on the left-hand side and Guarimpa on the right-hand side. You bust out around the life camp, major runabout. You go through uh, Mbora district, and then you bust out. Uh, you pass the institutional district, and then you bust out on the airport expressway at the junction of the Na Judicial Institute. From there, it continues right through uh, to, towards the games village and goes to the Galadima axis and bust out at uh, Wasa. So after that, we have Ring Road 3. Ring Road 3, if you go around Day Day area, you'll see Hanging Bridge also. So that Hanging Bridge is meant to be part of Ring Road 3, and then we have Ring Road 4 as well. All these are planned roads, some of which we have started. For instance, we have commenced the construction of the Ring Road uh, three, which starts from the day day area, will pass through Karsana and uh, Kagini, this, yeah, Karsana district, and go towards the airport and even beyond. So, this is all in preparation for the massive influx of people that we have been seeing. And as you all know, it has already been uh, officially uh, indicated by a lot of agencies that Abuja is one of the fastest growing cities in Africa. And uh, urbanization is a reality. Uh, by 2050, we are told about 70% of the world's population would be living in cities. So that's why whatever we do, we are planning for the future. Uh, of course, resources have been an issue, but within the available resources, I'm sure you can see that uh, with all modesty, we have done marvelously well during the last few years. Uh, at the extreme end there is Wuse district on the foreground, which is not shown it's a weird district, and you can see how they're doing the work. And we are doing it in such a way that as much as possible, there is minimum disruption to traffic. Uh, and this is it because most of the contractors are well tested, and of course the engineers have done this for the last 30 years, so they are very conversant. So these are, I guess, uh, apart from road infrastructure, we have what we call district infrastructure. Every district, for you to finish a district for people to start accessing their plots and building, you have what we call the district infrastructure. And this is the network of roads within the district. And apart from that, we have what we call the underground cadastra. That is the network of water system pipes and foul water system pipes, sewage pipes, telecommunication ducts, uh, uh, electrical cables. All these are done. And sometimes it takes you probably more time to do the underground cadastral before you are able to do the road itself. Thank you, Your Excellency. We on Dateline Abuja on Channels Television will continue to serve this city, own it, and update you as often as possible on the salient issues faced by its residents. Thank you for that public commendation and good luck with the enormous work you must get done in the year ahead. That is Date and Abuja this week. Please remember to let us know the happenings in your neighborhood using the social media handles showing right now on your screen. Thank you so much for watching. I am Kayla Magua. See you next time.